What more can you tell us on the release of Brown by the Bucks? Look, remember all the president's men follow the money. This applies in coverage of pro sports I have found over the past quarter century. The Bucks are saying that Antonio Brown went to them last week to ask for his $2 million in remaining incentives to be guaranteed. They didn't want to do that. Then lo and behold, he's upset about targets at halftime and then he's storming off the field. I think there's a lot more here than just was he hurt, was he too hurt to play. They're saying that he didn't tell anybody, trainer or coach, that he was too hurt to play uh, and, and the issue they believe is rooted in money so they ended up cutting him they're gonna pay him his final game check uh, and, and try and be done with it but look this is a player the Buccaneers really felt like they needed they're disappointed that they end up having to cut him but they felt like they had no choice okay what's the adage RC right there are two sides to every story and then the truth right um, who are you yeah. more inclined <laughs> to believe in this situation and what would you say is the most disappointing thing on how this is all devolved well, I think you're going to look at Antonio Brown's past and not believe him because you see a pattern. Um, and obviously, I've talked to enough coaches. I've known enough coaches throughout my life to know that they aren't always truthful as well. And so you still can't say that the truth is somewhere in the middle here. I think there's on both sides. I think both sides believe they've told the story accurately. They believe they've told the story as they see it and as they'll believe it going forward. I think the most disappointing thing now is, though, that no Antonio Brown on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's no Chris Godwin because he has an ACL injury. And so now this is a completely different team than we expected to see at the beginning of the season. We were raving, oh, look, it's so awesome. They got all 22 guys pl back plus some guys that are extra that helped them win the Super Bowl. They ain't got that no more. This ain't the same people that Tom Brady started the season with. And A.B. is going to say today on the Full Sin podcast that the only reason B.A. was riding with him, the only reason that Tom Brady was his friend was because he could play football. Well, hell yeah, that's the reason they was your friend. And now <laughs> that you won't go in, now that you won't play, you they can't, they ain't your friend no more. They are upset that you're coming out saying these things about them. So now they have to reply to these things instead of getting ready for the last game and the playoff run with you. This significantly hurts this team. This significantly hurts who Antonio Brown is and his legacy, his perception. But more than anything, it's just a bummer for everybody who likes to see good football play. It's true. It's, it's, I don't think there's anything more indicative of the fact that they have almost no weapons on the Bucks than Cyril Grayson is being interviewed on TMZ. And it's no knock on Cyril Grayson. Well, but first, I think off, <laughs> first off, L, L, you're going to stop playing with LSU. That man slept at LSU for four years. I know he didn't play football here, and he was never in Death Valley, no. but he got good by osmosis. Okay. He's a tiger. Perfect. So you're going to go ahead and claim him, even though he literally never suited up for your team. Got it. Is that how bad it's gotten for you guys down in Baton Rouge? Um, I want to go well, he went to my school. I'm going go to I'm gonna go to you, um, Mikey T, here, because I'm, I'm, you were on record, I believe, on this very show just a few days ago. In all fairness, this was before all of the text messages and all of the stories and the fodder and the throwing people under the bus and releasing pictures of text messages. But you felt like Antonio Brown could still have a career, that people would still give him a chance. Do you stand by that after what's happened over the last couple of days? No, I think things have changed. And going back 72 hours, my point was, in, especially in this year of COVID and literally your roster is week to week, there was a little bit of a scintilla of hope because if a team needed a receiver for a week, maybe you bring him, talk to the coach, talk to senior leadership, see what happened, and you try to get through one day. And I thought there was a path, but I don't think so anymore. And here's why. If you're Mike McCarthy, Matt LaFleur, Sean McVay, and you're in the playoffs, you're going to call Jason Light if you're the GM of that team, or you're going to call Bruce Arians and say, hey, what happened? Two sides to every story, as RC just said. But if I'm them, the calculus is this. How is this going to end well when it ended so poorly in Tampa, knowing how badly they needed him and how much Tom Brady relied on him? So if I'm another team that needs a receiver, I'm not going to go to Antonio Brown because of what's happened since the incident on Sunday. No, you know what, Mike, T, to your point, though, you're right. Like, after this all happened, there was definitely some whispers, right? Like, they could probably use him in Dallas. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.